Today we're going to be taking a look at the Alpha Daytona Paul Newman. Is it just another terrible offering from Alpha? Or is it something a bit different? That is what we're going to be looking at and discussing in today's video. Now the basic dimensions of this watch come in at a case size of 39.5 millimeters, a thickness of 15.8 millimeters, lug to lug 47 millimeters, and lugs of 20 millimeters. It is using a 20 joule Seagull SG2903 movement. This movement beats at 18,800 beats per hour and is actually very, very nicely decorated. It also has a very generously domed acrylic crystal, which in certain angles just warps completely and looks absolutely incredible. Now it's no secret that this Alpha is paying homage to the Rolex 6241 Paul Newman. And having experienced the 6241 Paul Newman at Salon QP this year, I have to say this Alpha has done an incredible job in paying homage to it. Now obviously it's not perfect, but for £145, can you expect it to be perfect? I really don't think you can expect it to be perfect, especially when the piece is paying homage to was far from perfect. The 6241 Rolex Paul Newman is obviously from the late 60s, early 70s, back when Rolex definitely didn't make the best watches. You know, their bracelets were terrible and their build qualities overall weren't that great. Now, I am in no way trying to say that the Alpha can be terrible. I'm just saying it is terrible. It has a terrible crown, probably one of the worst crowns I've ever experienced. The thread is nearly non-existent and the wind is just awful. One little trick Armand the watch guy told me was that when you go to screw the crown back down, wind backwards and then push the crown forwards and that definitely has solved that problem. Another thing is that bracelet. It actually has hollow links and I don't think they advertise that anywhere but them links are almost certainly hollow. They're so light individually and they're just not built very well. Not only that, the clasp it uses is very very tinny and pops open on demand. And we can't forget that rattle. It's almost as bad as the Seiko SKX rattle on a Jubilee. The loomed hands with loom pips around the hour markers might as well not be there. The loom is just terrible. So with that all being said, why do I enjoy this watch so much? Why do I keep grabbing this watch out of my watch box in the mornings over my Seiko SKX, over my Aorus Arctic GT? Why am I putting this watch on more than the rest? Before we can answer that, I've got to go through the pros of this watch. The size of this watch just feels right. It just feels like it should be the size it is. And it wears very nicely on my six and three quarter inch wrist. It wears more like a, a 41 millimeter in my opinion, rather than the 39 and a half millimeter it is. And that is obviously thanks to the pushes and the black bezel with the cream dial. It just really gives off this larger look. Whilst we're on the subject, we may as well talk about that dial. It is beautiful. Obviously Alpha has Rolex to thank for that dial, but still, I have to say Alpha have done an incredible job on getting it right. Plus that movement is not only beautifully decorated and an absolute pleasure to look at, it's also a great timekeeper. I'm losing only 5 seconds a day which is just incredible and actually compares to my Seikos and comes close to my Aorus which is just ridiculous. Now that open case back isn't available on all the Alpha Daytona Paul Newmans so just be sure you choose one with the open case back if that is what you want. If that isn't what you want then there's plenty of options out there for you as well. Now, whilst the crown may be absolutely dreadful, the pushes are not at all. They're very, very nice to click in and the screws just feel good. Plus, we can't miss that texturing on the subdials. It's absolutely beautiful and in the right light, just shines so well. Now, is this watch a bad watch? Yes, it is. It is a terrible watch. The crown is almost unusable and as a manual winding watch, you need that. And if it can't provide that, then you've got a terrible watch. The acrylic crystal is not very scratch resistant at all and is also not water resistant either. You know, you've got 30 meters water resistancy with this watch. You, you're going to be lucky if it lives. The bracelet is so terrible that is literally going to fall apart and the case is just very sharp the edges are sharp and it's not very well finished but there's something so charming about it for 145 pounds that terrible bracelet plays a part in that charm after experiencing the real thing it also had a terrible bracelet it's kind of like a sad irony to Alpha not being able to produce bracelets. It's worked out in their benefit for this watch. The numbers on the bezel are sharp and well done. The numbers in the subdials are sharp and well done. The just, just the dial is just so well done. Everything about this watch, in terms of looks, is spot on. 
And the reason I love this so much is because I can't help but imagine how it's going to look within a year when the case is scratched up, the bezel scratched up, the acrylics scratched up. It's going to look like a vintage piece and it's just going to work so damn well. Now in my unboxing, I called this watch an acceptable homage. I still stick by that. But I'd go as far as to say it's an acceptable watch. For £145, you're getting a manual wound chronograph. Not only are you getting that, but you're getting such a good looker. I'd say if you've got the spare cash and you're wanting something that looks brilliant and feels great on the wrist in an unusual way because it's terrible, pick this up. You'd be surprised. With that being said, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this watch and what you truly think of it. Do you think it's stupid to own a homage watch? Or do you think it's acceptable in this case? I want to know what you think and your experience with Alpha. Thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and peace out.